Okay, in this video, we're going to find the circumcenter of an acute triangle mathematically. Now, in order to do this, we need to remember a few things. What is a circumcenter? Remember, the circumcenter is when I go to the midpoint of the sides of each of a triangle. And in this case, this is an acute triangle. Okay, so let me just do that here first. This is going to be an acute triangle. And the circumcenter means I need to create the perpendicular bisectors to the sides of this triangle. So there's another vocabulary word for us, perpendicular, perpendicular bisectors. And remember again what that means. Doors. Oops, spelled it wrong there. There we go. Bisectors. So the first thing you need to do <clears throat> is to find the midpoint. Oh, that's another vocabulary word. Let's do that. You need to find the midpoint of each one of these sides. And conveniently, I have all three of the vertices of this particular acute triangle. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and organize our work. So the first thing I'm going to write down is midpoint. This is kind of like almost like writing an essay. So let's just go ahead and label this paragraph, if you want to call it midpoints. All right. So what is the midpoint of this side, this side, and this side? And for better convenience, let's label these sides A and B and C. All right, so let's start with AB. So the midpoint formula is simply adding the X's and then dividing by two, okay? So the midpoint would be equal to X1 plus X2 divided by two. And the same thing with the Y. The Y would be Y1 plus Y2 and again, divided by 2. In this case, it's going to be negative 5 plus 5. Divided by what? Plus 5. Divided by 2. And over here, I'm going to substitute 0 plus 12. Divided by 2. And this is going to end up being 0 because 0 divided by 2 is 0. 12 divided by 2 is Six. So the midpoint of this particular side will be 0, 6, which is right there. That's the midpoint. Okay? Let's find the midpoint now of side AC. Okay? Again, we know what the formula is, so let's just go ahead and substitute in our numbers. Negative 5 and 10 are my x's. Negative 5 plus 10 divided by 2, and 0 and 10 are my y's. It's going to give me 7.5, or excuse me, that's going to give me 5 over 2, right? Because negative 5 plus 10 is 5, so 5 over 2. And over here it's going to give me... Again, five, 10 over 2, which is just 5. 5, excuse me, did I do this right? Oh, that's a negative 10. My, there we go. That's the mistake. So negative 5 plus negative 10 gives me negative 15. There we go. That was our little mistake there. So it gives me negative 7.5 and... 5 is my midpoint here, so let's just go to negative 7.5, there's 7, and then there is 5 right there, okay? So that's my new midpoint. And now let's just go ahead and do the midpoint of BC. Let's move that up a little bit. BC is equal to negative 10 plus 5. divided by 2, and 10 plus 12, 
divided by 2. That's going to give me negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. So negative 5 over 2. Over here I'm going to get 22 over 2. And both of those decimal form is going to give me a negative 2.5. And here's going to give me 11. So let's find that midpoint. So negative 2.5, 1, 2, half, and then 11, which is right. 2.5, 11, right there. Okay, so let's go ahead now and find the perpendicular bisectors for each of these. Now remember what that means. I'm going to draw a perpendicular line to that midpoint. Now I can eyeball it, right? So I can just go ahead and do this and say, gosh, what would be a 90 degree angle? That looks about a 90 degree angle, but that's not exactly accurate enough. How can I do it mathematically, which was the purpose of this particular um, uh, video, right? So to do that, I need to find the slope of this line and then find the negative reciprocal of that slope and then use the point that I just found in the midpoint, right? And then put it into an equation. Now, let me go through that one more time. So the first thing I have to do, step two, is to find the slope of this line, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call that paragraph two. Let's go up here. I'll call this section two, slopes of the sides of the triangle, okay? So the slope is equal to the formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now let's find that for AB, right? I know that my points are 12, my y's are 12 and 0. So for AB, let's keep this in, keep this in order. So I get 12 minus 0 over 5 minus a negative 5. That's going to give me 12 over negative negative gives me positive. That's going to give me a slope of 6 over 5. Okay, so this slope would be over 6, up 5. All right, over 6, up 5, or over 5, up 6. Either one is the same thing. Up 6, over 5, over 5, up 6, puts me right there. To find the perpendicular to this one, I go ahead and change that to a negative 5 over 6. That would give me the perpendicular slope. Now once I have the perpendicular slope, and I've got this midpoint right, right here, which I've labeled as 0, 6. I can write the equation for the line that will give me the perpendicular here. Okay? So, how do I do that? This will be like my, what I'll call step 3. Equation for the perpendicular, and this is the symbol, by the way, for perpendicular, it's a line like that, for the perpendicular bisector. So, I know my point is 0, 6. I know my slope is going to be negative 5 over 6. I'm going to use the point-slope form. Remember that from algebra, the point-slope form. And the point-slope form is basically y minus y1 
is equal to m times x minus x1. All these are kind of looking the same as the slope formula, doesn't it? Just different variations of it. And let's go ahead and substitute the points in to where we know. Now, you only substitute in where you have the x1s and the y1s. You leave the x and the y alone, and then you go ahead and substitute the slope as well. So I'm going to put y minus 6 is equal to the negative slope here, which we said was negative 5 over 6. And then x minus 0. If you were to put this equation into like a graphing calculator, you will get a line drawn through at a perpendicular right there. Okay? So let me go through these steps again. I'm not going to do it for each one of these points because I think it's just going to take make for a really long video. and It's already getting long enough. So let me go through the steps again of how you find the circumcenter mathematically. Step one, find the midpoint of each one of the sides of your triangle. Okay? Once you have found that, step two, find the slopes of each one of the sides of your triangle, and then find the negative reciprocal of that slope, which will give you the perpendicular slope. Okay? Step three, now that you have a point and the slope, put it into the point-slope form, put that information into the point-slope form, and then go ahead and graph that equation, and you will get a line that looks basically like this. Actually, we'll do it this. Yeah, I'll just do it this way. You'll get a line that looks like that, and if you do that for each one of your sides, you'll get exactly where your circumcenter is located. And I'm going to just kind of eyeball it here so you can see. And then finally, one last time. And that will be your circumcenter. Okay? I hope that was helpful. It was a little bit of a long video, but I think it makes some sense. Just follow the steps.